In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Uh, continue to the next question. Um, how do you determine if that possession, that demonic, if that is a demonic possession and it is not a mental illness? In the United States, you know, an exorcist is trained to be a skeptic, meaning I should be the last person to believe that somebody is truly possessed. The church even says that I need to have moral certitude, and that means beyond a doubt, I believe the person in front of me is truly possessed. So I rely on experts. Step one of the protocol would be for the person to have a psychiatric evaluation. Sometimes people will say, if I have to have that evaluation, it means you don't believe me. But I let them know that if it is demonic, they need to be in a good place mentally before going through the ritual of exorcism. So talking to a mental health professional is important. Step two of the protocol is to have a medical examination by a doctor. So the church wants to ask these experts, do you think that there is a, a uh, mental reason why the person is acting the way they are? Is there a physical reason that they're acting the way that they are? And then based on the opinions of these experts, I would meet with the person and do an intake questionnaire. Because if somebody is dealing with the demonic, I would want to know, how did they open the door to the demonic into their life? So I would go through a series of questions, asking them about things like their involvement in the occult, you know, like magic and going to see, you know, like shamans and medians and psychics and these type of people. So I would want to know, what did the person do? to open a doorway to evil into their life, because then using the prayers of the church, I will know what doorway I need to help this person close. And you know, the next step of the protocol is probably the most important because it's not enough just to cast the evil out. God has to be invited in. It's based on Luke's gospel in chapter 11, where it says that once the demon is cast out, it goes and wanders through the arid wasteland and then coming back and finding the house swept clean, meaning it's gone, but God has not been invited in. Then it goes and finds seven other demons worse than itself, and they come and take up residence in the person. So again, it's the most important thing in an exorcism is not casting the devil out. It's actually leading the person to a deeper relationship and commitment with God, because that commitment is what will help protect and safeguard the person in the future from any other possible demonic attacks. I see. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching all the videos that I've posted previously. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it to all of your family members or relatives. And if you can be a member for this channel or a patron, that would be amazing. That would be an immense help for this channel. God bless.